douse me in maple syrup, cover me with feathers, twist my nipples, and force me to watch 10 hour kazoo video all the way through. <laughs> Phenomenal. TG63. These guys. Zoomy boys. There's some zoomy boys. Zoomy, 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 zoomy. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Oh, what is that? What is that from? Zoomy, zoomy, zoomy. God, what an annoying game, huh? Is that the game all the girls played at recess and you wanted to kill yourself? That's all well, that, but it's also the game that like was fun the first three times you played it, maybe two times you played it in college. And then all of a sudden you're like, man, why are we slamming and screaming so much? What? Oh, what is it though? Is it like a drinking game? Yeah. Uh, fuck me up. Zoomy, zoomy. <laughs> two, two, three, four. Oh, uh, uh, uh. I'm out, bro. I'm good. I hate games. I can't. <laughs> Just shut up, sit down. God damn. Zoomy, zoomy, <laughs> zoomy, zoomy. <laughs> What's up, yeah, bro? I remember playing it, and when I was introduced to it, I was like, oh, my God. Like, yeah, it was like a good group. There's like eight of us. Dylan was there. We were having fun. Like You have like a partner where it's like you have to memorize each other's numbers or something, and then like when somebody says it, you have to say it, and if you don't, then everybody's like, well, I'm just fun for uh, but I was, you know, you said four, so I thought it was five. And, uh, hey, too many rules. Too many rules. It's already like, uh, you know, <laughs> it's like, hey, we know that you're just playing the game because you want to try to be the partners with the girl you want to hook yeah, up with. Yeah, so. like, just do it or don't. Like, you need a game? Well, you need a right. game to We're seal the slam deal on here? T- Yeah. If you need a game, you don't got game. Wow. TG <laughs> TG laws. If you you should have you should have game. You should have dropped that on FY. There you go. Yeah, That's you a good little game. You know, got game. Yeah, that is nice. Hey, I'll like, I'll save it for the next season. Yeah. Why don't you just host next season? We do this bullshit be on. I don't know, it. man. I don't know what's going on. It's like the initiation, you know. Why didn't they do I don't even know if you could talk about this, but I me and Rai, we were always like kind of wondering. We we're like Okay, so they've had three seasons of F Boy Island now. Why don't they have an F Girl Island where like Ben and Casey and Mercedes is like the three dudes and there's like 25 chicks who are trying to, you know, like they have the Bachelor and the Bachelorette. Why don't they have F Girl Island? Um, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, who wants to watch a bunch of dude drama? That would be even better. Oh, if I they know. did that. They're, I don't know. They were like talking about it, but who knows, dude? Who knows with all that shit? Yeah. You should. But I'm glad you're it. watching, bro. You caught up. You should, pitch, you should pitch it so you don't have to do the CW or so the CW can't take it from us. Uh, trust me, they already did. <laughs> Just now. <laughs> God damn it. Hey, I'm glad you uh, got in the holiday spirit. What do you mean? Just wearing the Miami uh, shirt in LA, you know. Everything this is just perfect. Is not okay. Perfect you, summation. You know what of I us. did though. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What? What'd you do? Oh boy. I'm guessing that this is going to be. <sighs> this is the most like decoration of ever. some sort. Right, right, oh, right, right. When I got here yesterday, went to Target and got the Christmas cheer candle. Oh, that's a good one. Immediately. That's a good one. I don't even know. Like, I'm trying to describe the smell. It smells like 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 a childhood like family room. Like, you know, when you got yeah. sh- you know, shit's just booming. Like peak uh-huh. Christmas. Like maybe when you're like eight, there's a game on the big like box, big screen TV. That's yeah. the living room, it smells like. And you're just like, fuck yeah. Maybe there's a, a real tree in the corner. Is that the only is that the only decoration that you got, or did you get more? Um, that's all I've got right now, but I'm going to go back. Like I was, uh, I was, I walked there. So I was like, I don't want to walk back with a bunch of like garland and trees and reindeer and shit. But, but cause I was thinking about it. I was like, I could go crazy right now. There's a sexy little target, like right by my place out here. So I'm like, yo, nice. This isn't going to end well for you. Target targets out there are weird. Like, you know, I target where we're from and in Indy, you know, I'll go in the suburbs with my family and it's, a goddamn adventure and uh, it's a huge super target yeah. and you know there's a chick-fil-a that's right there by it and like there's a giant parking lot yeah and you go and it's an experience 
And all the ones in LA are just like tucked into a random mall with a library attached to it. You're like, that? There's a, yeah. it's, it's a like more story of a market. target out here. It's more yeah. of a market. You're like, it's, it's kind of like a halfway target. I'm like, I want the full thing. I want to get lost in a super target. Right. Yeah. I don't want to have to take an escalator to go upstairs to the men's clothing. That's exactly what it is. Downstairs in the target, there's a Starbucks. I'm like, this is downstairs. I know it's crazy. And right when you walk in so much like target Rams gear, how crazy is that? Oh, uh, just like, LA you always think, I'm like, this isn't right, dude. This isn't right. You always think that target would step their game up from Walmart or Kmart in terms of the gear. Yeah, they don't No, It's all the same off brand. I'm like, can we get some actual shit in here? Like, what's the big deal? Like get, get a Jersey. Can I get like a Cooper cup in here? But what's so interesting is that like the clothes themselves, like the men's clothing section, like hell yeah, I'll go in there and get a sweater, like a pair of black jeans. Yeah. You know, like Target, a, yeah. get get a few like waffle shirts, you know, like I'll, I'll outfit myself at Target, but in terms of team team gear, Disgusting. get the hell out of here. Who's get in charge of all that shit? Have you been, t- hey, dude, Meyer team gear. Have you seen Meyer like Purdue shit? I'm like, no, who's, who's cre- d- oh, take a look next time you go to Meyer on some weird shit. Just go in the men's like apparel. You'll see. They always look I you yeah. and it's all so like who like what mom was like, yeah, that's fine. It all looks like the stuff that you would put on a big dog. <laughs> you know, like a like a gold dog retriever. Clothes? Yeah, like a gold retriever or chocolate lab, like those fuck ass Purdue jerseys that they have, where it's like, oh, get your dog named Mackie a boiler jersey, <laughs> and yeah, it then says, it's, it says you know, boilers it's on his says boilers on his back. Yeah, like you right. want you like, to wear that shit. The numbers are like lower than they should be because it's got to go on the longer back of a dog. I hate that, man. <laughs> Don't talk about that. That makes me sick, dude. <laughs> and this is some nerdy uniform talk, and this is the place <laughs> to do it. Okay, you know, okay, this is real. This is real in depth. Okay, so Nike came out with all the new Nike uniforms this year and that new template, you know what I mean? For all the Nike college schools and all the NFL teams. Okay. And the numbers, if you look, are a lot lower than they should be on every single NFL uniform. Check it out. Next time you like watch the Steelers, the numbers are like this much lower than they should be. And it's driving me fucking insane. I'm, I know I'm not the only one that sees this. I haven't picked up on that. Peep it, dude. Next time you see it, peep it. Cause they've got like <laughs> the way it's sewn, like the Nike Jersey, the Nike uniforms have like a, a thread right here and it pushes mm. everything a little bit more down, dude. Next time you see it clubhouse, somebody in the clubhouse will my, my, well, be on this one. I would keep an eye on it next time I watch the Steelers, but I may not ever watch the Steelers again. So I may not ever see it. So. What's going on there? Can we get a minute? Cause I need some explaining. Cause I just go on Twitter and I'm like, I'm I'm like a half ass Steelers fan. And I'm like, so what's going on? Like Kenny Pickett's not really getting the job done. This is so sportsy and shit, but like just what is happening? It's just a uh... It's just a mix of a whole lot of not good things. You got a minute to talk about it? You know, I I don't want to just do it. it. Just do it. I don't want to speak it because I don't want to indict myself. You know, it's like one of those that like if I said what I really wanted to say, bro, come on, do it. I can't have a relationship with the team, man. Like I can't do it. And water I don't mean down, like water the, down a little bit, but they'd probably. I don't mean the players. It. I just mean like the actual team itself. Like they want to like collab on stuff, and like I'm very grateful, and it's awesome, and like do stuff like that. So it's just like I can't like. Yeah, it sucks. I'm a obviously a huge fan, and like it, it pisses me off, and I it really, really like really, like just it affected my Sunday and my Sunday night last night. Like it did, but I, I it's still like I it's tough. I I can't just like talk out of both sides of my mouth because then all of a sudden I'm like ruining relationships. You know what I mean? Yeah. So what's a, what's I will say, I will say with scissors, you're about to like (laughs) slice your head off. I will say 
that I do believe that the organization, the higher ups in the organization itself, and we're full on nerd sports talk and uniform talk to start this show. Who the hell even are we? But they are fully just so bought in and arrogant about themselves and stubborn that it's now gone from like, we want to be the best organization and win and make the right calls to, we want to show everyone that we're the Pittsburgh Steelers and we do things our way, no matter what everyone else says and how long people have been around that even though their message is perhaps grown a little stale and the game is starting to pass them by we're the Steelers and we, we have won six world championships and we have only had three head coaches since 1969 and, and nobody else does it this way. And this is how we do things. And that does get a little, a little nauseating, a little nauseating. And especially gets nauseating when everyone from a 10,000, 30,000 foot view, you know, who are from Indy or aren't in Pittsburgh, who don't follow the team like I do, you know, people on a bus at Disney world who see them wearing a Steelers thing. and want to talk to me about, Oh man, that Tomlin, I, I mean, he just deserves coach of the year. I mean, I don't know how he does it. I look up every week and I'm like, Tomlin just getting it done again. Yeah. Everyone where, where's everybody talking about that shit. When you come out flat as hell and you're down 24 to three to the Arizona Cardinals at home and a must have December game. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, they, they give me that coach of the year talk then, guys. But, you know, hey, he never had a losing season. So, never had a losing season, man. You know, it's just, he whoa, so lucky. Count your blessings that you got Coach Tomlin, man. Anyways. So, they need right. to fire the coach. Okay. <laughs> I just, look, like, Andy Reid coached the Eagles forever. Took yeah. them to four NFC, five NFC championships, a Super Bowl. Like just every year of my life growing up, the Eagles. Right. Eventually it was like, hey, you know, we, we just gotta move on. He goes to Kansas City, works out for them. They get Doug Beat Peterson, and then they get Nick Sirianni, works out for them. Like, yeah. It eventually it's just like, okay. The the argument has always been everybody like BP, everybody always says, you know, the media and everybody's like, oh, well, if they got rid of Tomlin, he would be hired at another job before he walked out the door. So that's your premise of keeping your coach that other people are going to hire him. It's like being in a shitty relationship, not a shitty, but like a relationship that you're just like, I think it's kind of run its course. We've been together for like seven years. I don't want to marry her really, but like, I I know that if I broke up with her, that like six guys would be in her DMs right away. So that's the reason for kids staying with her. Uh, I hit a little too close to home. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. I mean, you asked me to talk about it. I talked about it. No, there that's it good. I, no, I no, it no. Is. It's just no, like, it's good. It's good. Dude. Like I'm on the, I seriously, that's no lie. I'm on the bus in Disney world. Okay. Tuesday. First day that we're there. It's literally me, Riley, our son, Frankie, And my parents came with it's us five on this bus from our resort to Disney world, magic kingdom, the place with the castle, right? Happiest place on fucking earth. Mm -hmm. We have a family of like five that's sitting there with us. Right. And this guy is just one of those guys who wants to talk constantly, no matter who it is, no matter who's there. He just always has something to say. He wants to be in on the conversation. He doesn't get the clues to just shut the hell up, right? No, oh, no. And so then all of a sudden he's like, Oh, you guys are from Indy? Well, wow, okay. Yeah, the Colts, they've been looking pretty good. My dad's like, Ah, oh, well, actually, we're Steelers fans. So then you get to go through that whole big bullshit, right? So oh, then yeah. after from there, right, this guy's like, Oh man, he gets into the Tomlin stuff. But I'm like, I just straight up said he's like, he deserves coach of the year. I said, Ah, I'm gonna disagree with you on that one. He's like, Oh man, I just, you know, I don't I don't follow him every week, but hey, no shit, guy. I don't follow him every week, but Man, I look up and I just see that get it done. Okay. You want to really have the conversation, guy? Why don't you just sit over there with your fucking Lilo and Stitch beanbag on your shoulder and shut the hell up? I think he realized halfway through that he's talking to like this is the actual Pittsburgh Steeler. <laughs> the Pitts the Pittsburgher. Yeah, he's talking to actual actually he's talking to Ben Roethlisberger on a bus. <laughs> 
Hey, dude, we're not, why aren't you? You didn't promote your show on the twenty first. I know. Yeah, I didn't last time. I low key forgot. But this time, hey, everybody, Indianapolis, uh, December twenty first, Helium Comedy Club. I'm headlining. You should come out. It's gonna be uh, nuts. So yeah, see you there. Tickets in the description of the podcast and on Instagram and all that stuff. Holiday hoes. Holiday hoes, bro. You coming? Man, it really... You're trying, yeah. to, do a tight, you're trying to do a tight seven? Tight seven? Ten? Yeah, I mean, I could do... Yeah. What, whatever oh. whatever, whatever you would want. Whatever you Let's would want. Go. Whatever. Just, uh, we're just going to stand up there and people are going to throw fucking chickens at us, dude. Live ones, too. If you, re- if you really want to know what I want, that's it's that. <laughs> Thursday. It's a Thursday night. It's on December 21st, which we decided last year in our holiday host season that the 21st is actually the best day of the year. That's our favorite one. See you there. <laughs> 21st so is really 21st is nuts. Thursday? Oh, Christmas is on a Monday, right? Yeah. Eh. Christmas weekend, about, what, though? Starting off Christmas weekend? Yeah. How about the whole... Dude, Sunday. Dude, Sunday's Christmas Eve. Does that even make sense? Oh, it's so weird because every NFL game is going to be on. It's one of those where like they don't move it at all. Wait, every so game. is who's playing on? That's crazy. I don't know if I like that. Who's playing on actual Christmas Day? Nobody. No, they're doing oh, like night free. Football? I'm pretty sure they're doing like they're using Thanksgiving. They're they're the NFL just came in. And they're like fuck everybody. We're, we're hey, burpee boy. Whoa, whoa, NBA. I know that that was your day. We don't care. We're going to schedule. Remember that three games on it last year. Oh, wait, no, I don't remember. Cause I did. I don't think yeah. I did a damn thing on Christmas. I don't even remember Christmas last year. Like the dolphins and the Packers played. Uh, I'm pretty sure this year I'm going to pull up the schedule, but yeah, it's on a Monday. So instead of doing just um, the Monday night game, they're like, yeah, it's a holiday. Hey, screw the NBA. We're going to play three games that day. That's what they should do, though. I know the NBA is like Christmas, but like, dude. Monday, December 25th. Chiefs Raiders, 1 o'clock. Not very Christmas. Eagles Giants, 430. That's that's Christmas right there. Eagles Giants is Christmas. Dude, and then the nightcapper, the Monday night football on Christmas night, 49ers Ravens. It's pretty Christmassy. Pretty Christmassy. I remember they play on Thanksgiving night when the Harbaugh's are both coaching there. Like when I was oh, in high school, that's fuck. It was like that's, a Harbaugh. That's some yeah. family shit, dude. What's your ideal Christmas matchup? Can't say Steelers. What? Yeah. Um, damn. Uh, ideal, like just all time, or like now, right now, like this season, like right now, you, you they're like NFL's like Joey pick the four thirty slot on Christmas. Uh, that would be the San Francisco 49ers at the Green Bay Packers. Oh, I knew you were <laughs> going to stay Packers, dude, you motherfucker. Okay, no, okay. But if this, <laughs> but if you could, you're like Packers, Packers against Packers. <laughs> yeah, could we just do Packers legends? Ray Nagurski and uh, <laughs> fucking Brett Favre on like two opposite like sides. It's a Madden game, dude. How about when you're playing Madden online or against one of your like stingy ass friends and you pick the Steelers and they're like, "I'm the Steelers too." So it's just Steelers <laughs> against it. dude. That shit makes me want to die. I'm like, bro, uh, well, who's yours? Ideal Christmas matchup. Yeah. Um. Damn. God, I hate it, but like. I, I can't believe I'm saying this shit, dude. Wait, does it have to be NFC, AFC? No. I just did two NFCs. Who's my squad? I might have to look at all the teams. Hold on, hold on. Dude, for some reason, why why are the Texans like kind of dope right now? CJ Stroud, <clears throat> Domenico Ryans. Are they fun to watch? Nah, I can't watch the Texans on Christmas. Fuck that. They're not Christmas, though. Come on. They're not Christmas. For some reason, I'm thinking, like, this is weird, bro. This is weird. Vikings-Eagles. I want it. Ooh. I want it. I want it. 
Vikings, yeah, Vikings, very Christmas. I feel like growing up, for some reason, they were always playing like on that random Christmas yeah. Eve game. Randy Moss. Mm-hmm. That's why I said going it. off. I, I, I used to, I was watching the Vikings by the Christmas tree one year on Christmas Eve and just saw Randy Moss. And I was like, this is the best game of all time. I think they were playing the Falcons too on some weird shit. Do you remember the Colts and the Vikings played on Christmas Eve? I'm pretty sure. Bro, like in like the year 2000 or something. Game. I went to that game. It was insane. Are you serious? Yeah, dude. It was insane, bro. My dad was like, I got tickets <laughs> to Vikings Colts Christmas Eve. Randy Moss is playing. I was like, yo, let's fucking go. Bro. All the Santa hats. Insane, dude. It, it was it was legendary. And then the next morning is Christmas. Shut the fuck up. Crazy. See, I could do I could do a Christmas Eve game. I don't think. I don't think I could do a Christmas like last year when the Steelers played on Christmas Eve against the Raiders. Like if, if I could have gone, like if they would have been in town and playing the Colts or something, you play them on Christmas Eve night. Like I could do that. Yeah, but I can't. I Christmas day. I need to be in, in the Christmas zone. Like, right. It's I so be, it's you got to be in a house on Christmas, dude. The whole time I would just be like, this is cool. And I'm glad I'm here, but like, I'd rather just have it on at home and like, be by fire. I know. God, we're such hoes, dude. We're such <laughs> hoes. I'm not. I'm not. Hey, hey. Do you ever like kind of like feel bad a little bit for the players that have to play on the holidays? Every like, day. Damn. It's so bad. And I think they they kind of don't want to be there either. They're like, we're, we'll win. But like, I got to go home after this, you know? Like, I, like sometimes I think about I'm like, man, like, oh, dude, that guy just got drafted by the Cowboys. Sick. Oh, he's gonna have to play on Thanksgiving every year. I I I didn't want to ever say it, but like, yeah, I'm like, damn, I couldn't do that. It's like NFL or your family, bro. Pick one. I'm like, Thanksgiving. It's it's sad, but I do. Anyway. It's like that shit. It's like that shit where you're like, man, I haven't worn that pair of shoes in a while. I'm just gonna throw them on and let them know that like you're still there. I still see you. Like, dude, Barry Sanders has never had a Thanksgiving ever. No, Troy Aikman yeah. doesn't even know what it is. Yeah, and like I feel bad for the broadcasters too. Honestly, still like Troy Aikman. I'm gonna be out of Jim town. Nance. Jim Nance not there on Thanksgiving or Christmas every year, dude. But Troy like, Aikman played tough. for the Cowboys, and then now he broadcasts. So that's just like 50 years of no no Thanksgiving. Same with Romo, but now, uh, now to mention for for Aikman. He's with ESPN, so he gets it now because he's Monday Night Football. Nice. But he won't get Christmas this year because he's going to be doing Niners Ravens. Wow, we're fucking geeks, bro. (laughs) We're nerds anyway. How was Disney World? (laughs) Weirdly, it was like 49 degrees when we were at Magic Kingdom. Is that good? I liked it. Yeah. Yeah, you know, because you think about it, you're always just like, ah, Disney, oh, Central Florida shit, it's gonna be humid as hell. And then you're down there, and I literally wore a uh, like a Mickey Santa crew neck and and sweats, and we were chilling, fit. man. Best fit, we were ever. literally chilling. Yeah, it was awesome. What kind Kid of food man. did you eat? What kind of food? Um, I didn't know this, but I, like some people actually just go to Disneyland to Disney World just to eat. Didn't know that. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, food's okay. Like, oh, dude, we went to uh, we have this place in Hollywood Studios, and it's called uh, like Woody's Roundup Rodeo or something. And it's this Toy Story themed barbecue joint. That was amazing. Oh, we had such barbecue? good food there. Yeah, just it the- was awesome. Well, like what we had, we have? like Buzz Lightyear. So it was like family old style. Old. Yeah, like you're in there, and it's almost like you're in like Andy's room, and you're all supposed to be like kind of like toys, right? So it's set up, and you're sitting on like tables that are like different shit that would be at Andy's room, right? And um, the 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 menu is uh, they have like family style barbecue, right? So they bring out this platter that just has like brisket, ribs, chicken. They have all the different barbecue bottles on there. So you get a little spicy, you get a little sweet, get a little tangy or whatever, right? Mix them up. Uh, we got cheese tots that were awesome, which they called them. What do they call them there? 
barrels. They called them potato barrels. Oh, who's yeah. not eating that? Give me a fucking barrel. Right. And then, dude, they had these cheesy biscuits. They were cheesy biscuits, and they had like a little like jalapeno jelly that you would put on the biscuits or you could dip in them. Holy shit. It was amazing, dude. It was hey, so good. Is there a pizza planet there? No. What are we doing? That's exactly what I said. Because at Magic Kingdom and Tomorrowland, they have that kind of like cafe that almost kind of seems like a a pizza planet. And I literally said to Ryan, my dad, when we were in line for lunch there at Magic Kingdom, I was like, you know, I think they really missed an opportunity because Tomorrowland has been there for a while. But I was like, I think they missed an opportunity for when Toy Story came out to just put up a real life fucking pizza planet. Oh, who's not going? Who didn't want to go to that when you're a kid? Who doesn't want to go to that right now? Pizza Planet? Why does that sound so good? The pizza's so good. They got all those games in there and shit. Missed op, babe. Come on, Mickey. Get your shit together. Yeah, so it's cool. You just walk so much, bro. Oh, that's all it is. All it is is walking. Like 18,000 steps a day. It was crazy. What was the best ride? Um, wow nothing really stuck out huh i got to do the rise of the resistance for star wars i did the millennium falcon with my dad so that was cool the one like that he, where, we're, where you gotta like steer and there's like other people yeah. like, bro that's a bitch we're, we were both pilots so that was cool that's um, a lot of responsibility i was like i don't know if i'm the guy for the job honestly i'm like I can I be an I engineer? Kind of scared. gunner just shooting at shit well i'm always a pilot I'm like, you fuckers are lucky, bro. You guys are lucky. It's one of those weird ones, too, that like up is down and down is up. But like, if you go right, you're going left. So I'm like, can't you just make it normal? No, what it's got to be the hardest thing ever. And the, all the gunners and engineers are talking shit. I'm like, you get up here and drive. Yeah. Pressure's on. Back Fucking there running your mouth, dude. I'll crash this. Yeah, thing me and my right dad. Now. Me and my dad had this old couple that was back there. It was me and my dad and this old couple. And they were like the Disney old couple, you know, like this is something they probably do like once or twice a year. And you could just tell that they were like really disappointed in their experience because we were flying. And I was like, get the fuck out of here. Move along, Nana. <laughs> Move along. Rise of resistance was dope. Uh, yeah, they got, dude, they have those like trackless roller coasters now. Huh? You know what I mean? You didn't ride any of those like the track is like magnetic underneath you. So it seems like you're just like going around everywhere. It's controlled, but there's not you can't see the track to where it's like, OK, I know that I'm turning left up here or we're like getting ready to drop or anything like that. It's oh. trackless. Ooh, I don't know about that. Like the Ratatouille ride at uh, Epcot. Dope. <laughs> That's crazy, man. Disney I know it's a whole different world, dude. Everybody's got their matching T-shirts on and shit. Like, it's such. It is. A thing. I was the outfits are such a thing. I didn't know. Oh yeah, it's like I was thinking it. about. Yeah, I was thinking about it. And I was just like, it's so crazy that like Walt Disney, like this all just came from him, like wanting to draw cartoons, like all of this. All these enterprises and these Etsy pages of these people making these fake ass shirts and sweatshirts and hats and family, like just because Walt Disney like wanted to have an imagination. Yeah, let's it's crazy. pop off. Let's pop off and draw a mouse real quick. Let's draw a mouse and then own the entire world, literally. The whole world. And he's still alive, which is the craziest part. And he's just listened to us say that about him. So good Walt Disney Walt Disney died 1966 dude. he's 100% still alive dude don't don't even act like he's not moving around under under the ground at Disney World somewhere just you know he's it. like one of those lizard people oh yeah he's dude he's alive he's the that's the most faith I've ever had in anything that Walt Disney's alive for sure <laughs> dude, the, the, it's the Disney conspiracies we're not going to get into them but what are they want to bro? He's frozen. He is. <laughs> don't act like you don't know all these, bro. Come on. Like Ted Williams. No, like Walt Disney. They froze his ass to like keep him alive and like all that kind of yeah. shit. And like, yeah. 
the secret was getting out so hard that he was frozen. They made the movie frozen. So when you Google frozen, frozen, the movie comes up instead of Walt Disney. <laughs> I didn't know any of this, dude. I swear to God. Oh, check that. When you're down bad on TikTok, just look up some Dis- some weird Disney stuff. And yeah. I do like those TikToks about Disney where that was like one of those people that has that song on that that's like and and um it's always like I was re-watching Toy Story 2 when I saw this and it's like some little Easter egg that's from a different Disney movie that, that like has shouldn't have a tie or anything like that in. And then they go through it and you're like, oh my god, maybe this is it's all just one giant world. Yeah. I love, dude. I'm such a whore for an Easter egg. Like that Man. Toy Story ball, that yellow one with like the blue star in it will show up in like fucking Rogue One or something. And Bouncing like, around. You're like, wait. God, I want yeah, that yeah, ball yeah. so bad. Can you buy that ball? That ball looks oh, so Oh, yeah. They got awesome. them everywhere. They got them everywhere down there. Oh, I want to play dodgeball with that ball. It's weird. Yeah, they're hard. Like they're, It's like the hard plastic. You fuck somebody up with that Toy Story ball. It'd make like a squeaky noise too and it connects. And you're like, what? Huh? All right. Yeah. Do you know what song I'm talking about though on TikTok? No. I was trying to. Yeah, I do like that. I like that. You always know some crazy shit is about to happen. And it's like somebody explaining something in depth and you're like, wait, what? You put that song, and it's probably why they do it 100%. You put that song in any TikTok, I'm probably watching the first 12 seconds at least. Yep, my face. Right when that song plays, wait. Doesn't matter what it is, dude. It could be, I, I could, I could, it could be the thing I care the least amount about. I'd be like, this has got to be some interesting tie in here. So interesting. And there's a new sound on TikTok. I know you've heard it. It's in the background of like the Jeremy Shockey highlights and like the Gronkowski highlights. <laughs> it's like a it's like a good rap beat, but like every time it plays, it's like a it shows like a wide receiver and a DB going at it. Like in like him. It's like a it's like a Odell Beckham Jr. like Josh Norman like matchup. And it just shows them going at it. And, but every time it's probably just on my TikTok right now because all I do is watch them. But every time I hear that rat beat, it's like a linebacker and a tight end. And I'm like, oh, I got to see this shit. <laughs> Here, Damn, I, can, I don't know. I, can I don't know that one. Dude. Yeah, please do, because I'm sure I have heard it. But it's insane. I don't know if I'm going to be able to find it or if I want to. <clears throat> it's all right. You don't got to find it. Okay, bro. But goddamn, it. it's uh, what's up? We we have we have arrived to bowl season. Is it still? No, it's not Capital One Bowl Week, is it? Is it? Is that ah? I, uh, I think the sponsor may have changed. I don't know if it's a Capital One Bowl Mania Bowl Week anymore. Can we just can we just run through some of the bowl names and we can talk about them? Yeah. The logos are really doing their thing. It's probably because yeah, I'm used are. to seeing the Super Bowl logos. You know, they're like super similar now. Like the last yeah. 10 Super Bowls are like whatever. But so bowl game like logos, them. bro. My God. Yeah. That's the new. That's the new Super Bowl logos. Is the, Are these. This might be my favorite one right here. 76 Birmingham Bowl. Oh, that 76 logos. Fire. Just looks like football. Yep. You know, every time I see a 76 gas station, I'm like, I got it. I got to give them some love. <laughs> I think, uh, dude, the potato bowl, potato bowl's popping off. Wait, what? Oh, the that, famous that, Idaho that, potato bowl. And they made a football, the potato sour cream, the sour Let's cream go. for the laces. Well, that's, that's, that is, that's, that's good stuff, right? There's there. something clean and sexy about this, too. Yeah, just makes you want to be tropical. Yeah, let's go on a vacation, honey. Where are we going? The Myrtle Beach Bowl sounds good to me. I get down with the one, the Gasparilla Bowl with the two swords coming looking, out the side, looking insane. I don't know if I like this. 
Uh, I could do a I could do a Polizzi or a Polizzi minute on this one too. Yeah, yeah. Football games at baseball stadiums. Stop. Uh, yeah. Stop. Who likes them? It's like, hey guys, they used to do that in like 1934 when they didn't have an option. Like they had to have play everything in the same place. Now we literally can make a football stadium anywhere of anything. There's like 50 yards of sideline on one of the sidelines. And it's always like Northwestern. So I'm like both, both teams have to be on the same sideline. They have to do like the signs and shit. I'm disgusted. Remember when the Raiders used to play on a baseball field, be like Tim Brown taking a slant to the house and he'd be running over like brick dust. Ugh. you knew (laughs) it was September because you knew it was September football when that shit was happening. That and where the 49ers really like, God, damn, okay, here we go. I know, but I'd still love every minute of it because it'd be on NFL primetime and they'd be playing the Packers. Yeah, and it hit the dun, 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 dun. as Tim Brown was taking it to the house to the crib, over second base. Dude. Tim Brown, biggest dun, shoulder dun, pads dun, dun, of all time. Dun. Biggest shoulder pads, no gloves. White towel dangling. I'm like, dude, get with the times. I love you, but get with the times, man. OG, OG, like face mask too. Yeah. He had the God, first Ra- version of everything. That Raiders squad. Tim Brown, Jerry Rice. Did they have like a uh, a newer, like a receiver too? Like a younger dude who was kind of like, you know, because it couldn't have been those old ass dudes. Fine. I'll look it up. <laughs> Best Google search ever. 2002 like, Oakland Raiders roster. <laughs> yeah, dude. It had to be like, dude, dude, street, dude, dude, dude. High streets. Jerry Porter. Oh. He was sick as fuck, bro. Oh, Jerry <laughs> Porter on the Raiders was nasty, dog. Oh. I knew they had to have a young gun in there. Uh huh. That was Rich it. Gannon just slinging. Rich Oops. Gannon with the oldest football helmet of all time. Yep. Those skinny ass brown pads inside that. I'm like, that's not doing shit, dude. Ew. <laughs> Who is the running back? Charlie Garner. I don't know why I want to say Tyrone Wheatley. Yeah, that fits a little more. The shoulder pad height fits a little more with Tyrone Wheatley. Charlie Garner was nasty, though. Oh, he was on the team. He was on the team. Charles Woodson and Rod Woodson. Bro. Fuck off. Man, how confusing is that scouting report? Two right. Woodsons? I'd be like, Jesus, dude. The marketing, the social media team for the 2002 Raiders, if it existed, definitely would put out like a spoof Woodson and Woodson law firm video. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like bro, like twins. <laughs> oh, shit. The 2002 Oakland Raiders. Never. Yeah, forget. that's uh, <clears throat> the bowl season, man. Any thoughts on uh, the college football playoff? Um, I think the worst, I think, uh, like this Alabama team, like the worst Alabama team, I think is going to be the best Michigan team ever. Every time I think, yeah, like as a Michigan fan, like you can just tell, bro, did you see the reaction? Oh, that, that some I was like, ESPN. Oh, not a good look, not good, man. not a good look. <laughs> like it wasn't anyone important that was like, Oh man. But like, that was not okay. Like the, right, it wasn't cool. The overall audio was like, oh, yeah, dude. Hey, a bunch of dudes doing this. <laughs> hey, a lot for the, of this, for the audio listeners, just putting your the double hands behind the head or on top of the head. Like, oh, no. When you saw that A on the screen, a lot of this going on. Uh-huh. Yep. Harbaugh yeah, didn't even know what I was think going Alabama's on. better this year, bro. Oh, they, their quarterback's like a wide receiver. I'm like, good luck. He's sick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. See ya never. He is. <laughs> it's just so fun. Like every year with the debate. And then now next year, we're going to be debating the 13th and 14th team. And it's just, it's exhausting. I'm okay with the the six. Uh, make it more, you know. They got 12 next year. They're doing 12? Yeah. 
Oh, like an actual like December bracket? Yeah. Yeah. That's what's up. That's first nasty. round of games at first round of the games like on campus. I think the first and second round games on campus. And then the third round would be the final four. They do those at like the Rose Bowl, the Sugar Bowl, et cetera. Yeah. I mean, it should be good. Yeah. But, but, what I'm saying, what I'm saying is that like when people are gonna bitch no matter what, like next year, the thirteenth ranked team is gonna be, you know. We should have been in. This is stupid. Broken they like a, system. They need a play in game or something. Yeah. This schedule though. God, I just love the the the, the December sixteenth to the twenty third with the college football games. There's just nothing like it. But it, it's just something about this though. Something about that. <laughs> something about that, dude. There's some that's the one I'm watching, I think. Hey, Tennessee, Iowa, and playing in Orlando for the eighteenth year in a row in a bowl game. Why is it? Why is it always the same, dude? But yeah, like starting on Saturday, December 16th, 11 a.m. Myrtle Beach Bowl, Georgia Southern versus Ohio. Like, you know, you're just sitting there. You're either getting ready to go to like a bar crawl or a weird family Christmas that isn't your family. That's like, it is your family, but it's not the one you celebrate with on Christmas. It's like the one that's like, yeah, it's just, you'll get it over with and be there for an hour and a half or two hours. Have some weird pizza, hut pizza and be done. Oh, fire. <laughs> but like, still you're like, Hey, I got quite the slate for this, for this uh, get together with Gigi. Hey, the, the game you're watching when you're hung over. <laughs> for sure. Nobody's watching that, dude. That game at seven thirty though. The game you're watching when you're hung over. Northwestern in a bowl game. I'm like, see it. No, thank you. Oh, this is oh, this is nice. This one, the dude, Detroit always has a heater. Those color, like that's that's a wild color matchup. I know. Bowling Green in Minnesota. Some about th- these two teams are gonna have so much fight in them. <laughs> you know? Oh yeah. The one that would really got our attention though. Well, the two. What's the one I sent you? Was it the famous side out? Yeah, it was. Georgia State, Utah State, Saturday, December 23rd, 3.30. Ooh, that's it. Georgia State. Or the Birmingham Bowl with your logo that you like, the 76 one. Ooh. Noon, December 23rd, Troy versus Duke. Duke always pops Duke. off in bowl games, and that's going off of that one time they did when they played Texas A&M or whatever. That's Birmingham, Alabama. So, you know, it's just going to be like the worst fucking weather of all time. So gray and misty rain. (laughs) Love it. Congrats on a good season, kids. You get to go to Birmingham and play in the piss rain and gray skies. Ew. That'd be great. Wow. Transfer portal popping off every time I open my phone and I see somebody new. It's amazing. Ohio, Ohio State quarterback transferred. Which one? Or he's in the portal. The one, the starter, Kyle McCord. Already? Started one year, went 12 and one. like, I'm out. A good move. You can pour, you can pour, <laughs> you can dial up the portal before the bowl game. Oh yeah, dude. Portal's open. I think, I think the day after the season, portal is fucking. Bro, right can, I give, can, there, I give, can I give you a, a video idea? Yeah. Like you walk into the transfer portal and you see like what, like, you know what I mean? Like being in the actual portal, (laughs) dude, that needs to be a commercial series. There's just like fucking Lee Corso in there. He's like, what's up? Oh shit. Like he's not supposed to be in there. Right. But also he's like everyone, you know, they're making a decision and not so fast. My friend, like you got Lee Corso, a bunch of home Depot shit. Who's Like, like the portal God. Who's like the 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 like portal boss? I feel like it's Kirk Herb Street a little bit, like in a throne, like you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's Deion Sanders. <laughs> it does seem like that, dude. He's like a founding father. I feel like he created the portal, right? You got that. You got like a bunch of like 
just a bunch of like hot ass chicks in different uh, school like branded clothes to try to get you to go to different. You know what I mean? Backpacks the, with money. Yeah, all the stuff that like you see in the movies or TV shows about like high school players choosing a college where they set them up. There's like three escorts that they on the recruiting trip. There's like three escorts that are there. You know, like <laughs> oh, this is what really goes down. This is how you get people to go there. There's like a Corvette, and you're like, okay. It's essentially just like the dirty version of the Heisman house. <laughs> They're all like praying to Cam Newton because he like started the portal kind of. <laughs> Dude, Cam Newton's OG portal. Well, yeah, because all that shit that went down with him getting paid 80 grand or whatever it was. That's it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Jesus Christ, they got a deal. I don't think he went there. I think Mississippi State like offered him eighty grand or something like that, and they all got in trouble because he like was under the table for them to go, and then I don't know. But then obviously he didn't go there. Dude, Cam Newton's got the most interesting like story of all time. Like just went to that weird JUCO and <laughs> popped off. He, yeah, now he's just like making his rounds. He's just like on the Dan Patrick show. Just like smoking cigars on the Dan Patrick show. I'm like, all right. I mean, I get if I was Cam Newton, I'd probably be doing the same thing. Just looking, dressing like somebody's auntie. <laughs> Bro, I want a Cam Newton Blinn Juco jersey so bad. Oh, that may be the fucky jersey of all fucky jerseys right there. There, there we go. Do we need to fire up the comments? Fuckiest jersey? Cam Newton Blinn Juco. <laughs> Hey, Johnny Manziel, Oregon. Oh! <laughs> oh, shit. Bro, I just got hot. Don't even think that he ever, like, steps foot on campus, but he committed there. He and did, dude. You just there's, make it There's custom. something. There's, there's one out there. Like the Dennis Dixon, Oregon template, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah. With the fucking diamond whatever those are. The diamond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That shit. All the back. What could have been Cam Newton, Mississippi State jersey? <laughs> Cam Newton, Florida. You can have a whole club, a whole Cam starting Newton, five of Florida. Cam Newton, Bucky. Cam Newton, Florida. That might be it. Because it's like, what? <laughs> oh, yeah. Because I remember he, he was on the game. Because I would be Florida all the time. And sometimes I'd put him in. I'd be like, I don't know who this dude is. Then two years later, he's a like, beast. That was Cam Newton? Yeah. Yeah. 6'5, 240, 92 speed. Why is this guy not playing? Right. I was like, he's kind of oh, yeah. like got Tim Jesus Christ as quarterback. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. I heard, I heard right, we got so, some emails. Yeah. Let's hit, let's, let's hit him up. Uh, it's from Alex. Subject is Roy Hibbert. Talk to me. So I just remember how Mark Jackson would say it. Roy Hibbert. I love Mark Jackson. And you look at the way that Roy Hibbert playing. Because he's East Coast, and so, he's, you know, anyway. Uh, and now that we've been refreshed on the great feast, the people need to know. NFL player comps on the following Thanksgiving dish- dishes. dishes: Turkey, mashed potatoes, green bean, casserole, dressing, pumpkin pie. Love the pot and appreciate all the laughs during the short week. During the work week. Slap my ass until I cry like no Sean Moreno after the national anthem. <laughs> that is fire. The craziest tier of all time. Okay, what? Okay. Though? NFL player comps for Thanksgiving dishes turkey, mashed potatoes, green bean casserole, dressing, pumpkin pie. This is going to be rough. So, like, what player is mashed potatoes? Yeah. Probably like that big ass offensive tackle for the 49ers. Trent Williams? I mean, yeah, he's something. I was going to say, like, Vince Wilfork. Yeah. Fork. Oh, my God. <laughs> I actually did a Colin Cowherd blog about this, I think, a handful of years ago, but it was just with quarterbacks. Ooh, trying to rip remember. them off. I don't I, I don't remember. Who's Pumpkin Pie? Th- it's like a diva. I almost want to say Pickens, but I know you're mad at the Steelers, so I don't want to bring it up. No, pumpkin pie is too good. It can't be like you can't have bad with it. It's too good. Um, 
I think it's a receiver. Who's the best? Oh, it's kind of like a Tyreek Hill type. I don't know. This is really hard. It is really hard off the dome. Dressing, but dressing, I have, I'm taking, he's probably call that dressing is stuffing. Yeah. So I'm going to go with dressing. I'm going to say, uh, you know, your third down. Give me Jalen Warren is dressing because he's really good and he's stuffing, you know, he'll punch you in the mouth, right? Like he'll get up in there. Uh, but you only need it and like hit and go, right? Like it's really good when you just have like a side of it, bam, amazing. And then, and then you're off a hey, pumpkin pie. I hate this because I don't want to make it weird, but it's Jalen hurts. He's, he's good. He looks good. And it's just like, it's the right time. He can't miss. I like it. That might be it. I like it. Green bean casserole. Oh, that's somebody dirty. That's a, that's like a, uh, that's like almost a, like George Kittle or something. Just rugged, dude. Yeah. I'm trying to think though, like, would that be a side dish? It's like green bean casserole. We don't have to have it. You want it? Yeah, I can go Kittle on that. Turkey. I always said Big Ben was turkey. <laughs> Big Ben just just always looks like he just ate every time they played. <laughs> I was like, he just had two meatball subs, and that's for sure. Before every game, I'm like, dude, can you just uh, like hold off on the on the post game food, dude? He always found it before the game. <laughs> Big Ben always finding the post game pizza before the first quarter. Like Jesus, bro, you gotta get one of those. He's one of those guys too that like you know those 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 freaks in high school or college that you played with that like they could literally do anything like be fucked up the night before eat terribly like right before practice and it just like doesn't even affect them. That's Big Ben. Yeah, he could just have a plate full of dry ass turkey, all that whole entire meal, and just go out there and yeah, probably put up like two touchdowns, a pick, three sixty five. He always he was always good for a pick for sure. <laughs> uh from Jacob for Christmases. Oh shit ass. <clears throat> underrated movie underrated movie for sure. Also, I picture this being Ben's life. Never married, doesn't want kids, and does anything to not see family for the holidays. Also, Ben can kick rocks for saying my May birthday suck. My birthday is in May. Love the pod and look forward to listening to it every week. Slap my ass with Josh Dobbs eyebrows as he runs into the playoffs. All right, so he's saying that Four Christmas is a movie with Vince Vaughn and Reese Witherspoon is an underrated Christmas movie. I would agree. You probably never seen that one. Uh-uh. Very relatable. Well, and then besides the fact that like he never celebrates Christmas with his family, like he's always just trying to avoid it. But in the movie, he has to because their plane, their flight gets canceled or whatever, and so he has to go to all four Christmases. So all their different families are running around like crazy. I'm like, yeah, that's uh-huh. my life. I literally have to go to four Christmases and it is a very funny, a lot of family hijinks happening. Um, pretty straight up there, Jacob about the main birthdays. <laughs> ben can kick rocks because well, my birthday okay. is in May. All right. I'm sorry. May birthdays. How about this? This is what actually went through my head before. Um, I said that and I was going to go March and then I switched it to May last second. So let me March birthdays. Okay. Jesus Christ, Clubhouse. I mean, you, but you're all, I think January might be the only month, maybe February too, to where you want to have people to February is the OG bad month. You, if your birthday's in February, you, you kind of know it sucks. You're like, yeah, ah, exactly. it's not great. From Michael, player aesthetic from Mikey. So, the fellas, love the show. Most people would go with the flashy, cool aesthetic, not me. Give me Mike Allstop with the big ass cowboy collar and no gloves. Give me Brett Favre and Snowy Lambo with the baggy sleeve jersey and the fucking one buckle chin strap. P.S. Slap my ass while I'm rounding third after hitting a homer like my little league coach used to. Yeah, I can't, I can't disagree there, man. I mean, I think you would say that it's fair that on this show that we we could get down with the Jalen Hurts who's looking real fly, but we also love just an absolute grungy fucking slobber knocker. Right. And Mike Allstott was kind of both like for that era. Like he was like super grunge, but his shirt was tucked. Like he still yeah. had it together. He wasn't like a slop fest. Wrist tape. Yeah. Like he's, he was kind of clean with it. <laughs> you got to have a that- couple of those guys. 
that like 97 to 2002, 2003 era, that was the clean look is to look like bulky and fucking like in it. Like you just came out of NFL blitz. Yeah. You know? big Bill Romanowski. Pads. Right. Right. That was the aesthetic. So we get down with that for sure. Who was the other guy he said? Mike Allstott and who? Brent Favre with the super. Oh. Remember how he used to have like the super long, like floppy long sleeve? Yeah, Brett Favre's sleeves is like something you should be able to unlock on Madden. You know what I mean? <laughs> like you got Brett Favre, but like Brett Favre's sleeves, you're like, oh, oh you know I mean? shit. Yeah, dude. they're all brown and shit. They start the game wide first series. They're just brown. Brown lasers with brown sleeves on. Oh. Uh-huh. All right, from Connor. It says restaurant nightmare. Hey, guess what? Also, uh, I'm sick again, if you can't tell. Uh, greetings Johnson too, for the past 100 weeks. <sighs> Jesus. Sick, guys. Greetings, Johnson and Schmitty. Huge fan of the show. I have a different question for you both. Essentially piggyback off each other. Joey, I'm from Pittsburgh, and I've experienced a ton of local places to eat in my almost 22 years of life. I also work at the local Pittsburgh restaurant called Burgatory. Phenomenal. Question for you is, what are your favorite places to eat in Pittsburgh when you are in town? They're the obvious ones, Fiore's, Permanis, Pamela's, but do you have any other places you'd love to go? Here we go, Steelers. Finny Boy, bouncing off me saying I work in a restaurant, do you have any wicked restaurant stories from your days of working in the service industry? I sure do have a ton, and I'm sure you do too. I also have a Boogie Cousins Powder Blue Kings uniform that I ordered for $9 off a rip-off Chinese website. Yep. Slap my ass, douse me in maple syrup, cover me with feathers, twist my nipples, and force me to watch 10-hour kazoo video all the way through. Phenomenal. That's um, like to me. Yeah, no, uh, I love smoking Joe's. Um, that's one of my favorite spots, Connor. There, uh, there's this uh, the Foundry on the North Shore. Uh, it's like a brunch spot that I enjoy going to. It's really good. Um, I just went to this place as a wing spot when I was there in October. God, I can't fucking remember off the top of my head, but it's up in Mount Washington. Um, it was really good. Uh, go to Archie's had that on the South side. I, I enjoyed that place too. Um, pretty much anywhere you just get cold beer and some good wings. I'm down for, uh, but also for Manny's. Yeah, it's great. Uh, uh, Ben, any stories? Yeah, I got a quick one. Um, so every single time I worked at this restaurant, I would get double shrimp just like straight up they'd cook it or whatever and i just get it in like a to-go cup and i just eat the shit out of it when i got to work and one day like it was it was one of those like wednesdays i had to like close it it just wasn't and i i banged the shrimp immediately when i got there because i was like depressed and it was undercooked and like two people didn't show up to work that day so it was like all right whatever um, you know, I'm staying here all night. Cause every time you work in a restaurant, there's like a slight chance you could go home, like on some like weird shit. Like we're overstaffed, we're understaffed. Two people didn't show up to work. So I was like, yeah, I'm staying, I'm staying this whole time, whatever. I eat the shrimp, dude. I immediately break out in hives. Oh no. <laughs> and I'm like, what do I do? And they're like, dude, you can't leave. Cause we're like two people didn't show up. So like you so dude, I'm working all night in this restaurant, just my face is Oh, like, hived out, dude. Going up the tables like you guys need a refill. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> it was iconic, That's rough, dude. Iconic. That's tough. Day. Next I'm day, sorry. I was there, ate the shrimp again. No fear. Yeah, I mean, you know, you're gonna get a bad batch every now and then. You gotta keep going in. Yeah, yeah. Gotta, gotta, gotta get it going. But yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was so. Kind so of so you were at the same time. It was wild. You were chubby face. You were chubby face for a day at, at work. We'll see, like, yeah. I just had, and it's like up here where it itches real bad. And I just, sometimes yeah. I couldn't stop or I'd forget I had them and I'd it. And then there's like even more oh. it's insane, bro. On my neck too. It was like, this guy's serving me food. Yeah. This is gross. Ugh. Crazy. From Chris NFL expansion. Hey guys, love the show. Keep up the great work. I got a hypothetical NFL expansion question for you. You have the opportunity to bring an NFL team to a new city. What city are you going to? What are you naming the team? Who are you handpicking to be your head coach? 
I'm from Omaha, Nebraska, so I'm definitely bringing a team here. The Omaha Outlaws convinced Zach Taylor to be their head coach as he returns to Nebraska for the first time since he played quarterback at the University of Nebraska. Toss through like pizza dough and slimy with some Home Alone aftershave. <laughs> Seasonal, festive, nice. All right, so what city are, are you starting the team? What are you naming it? And uh, who are you handpicking to be your head coach? Let's collab on this, dude. Okay. Who needs an NFL team real bad? Um, Vegas. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, Nebraska is pretty good. That's a pretty good. Yeah, like, I, I kind of love it. It's not bad. Um, I would say San Antonio. You got the Cowboys already there. You got the Texans already there. Yep. But it is could a go state. Could go Oklahoma? Alabama. Alabama. Oklahoma. Oklahoma City. Oklahoma City. Okay, see. <clears throat> nice. Football God. crazed area. No pro team. Love their college teams, obviously. Oklahoma City is a pretty decent market. Get some more middle America shit. We got enough in New York and California, obviously. You know, there's something. Let's go some. Let's. let's Oklahoma say, City. Yeah. We cool with that? Yeah, I'm down with that. Yeah. OKC. Okay, what are they known for? I know. I was just trying to think of that, too. Uh, yeah, the thunder. I mean, some storm shit. It's got to be an animal, right? God damn, this is tough. Well, you had the, I mean, you have the thunder. Oklahoma City. What's, what's Oklahoma City known for? 2 8, <laughs> sweeping around the edge. That's what they're known for. Oklahoma City is a can't miss stop in cowboy country. All right. Well, we already have the Cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> the National Stockyards is the world's largest feeder and stocker cattle market. Okay. Oklahoma City bison. Bison's nice. Okay, Oklahoma see, City stallions. Ooh, stallions could be cool. Stampede. Oh, here we go. Oh, I like shit. that. Okay, see Stampede. Because I was about to say, the only problem with Stallions is sounds good, but it's too, like, that's every made-up team in, like, a movie about football, you know? So maybe the Stallions and the Tigers. Stampede. I love a team without an S, you know? I, I love it. Okay, see Stampede. The fans, you know, they're the fans are the herd. Sorry, Colin. Maybe, maybe like, what's a stampede? Maybe there's a, well, the bowl logo is already the Texans. So I can't do that. Maybe it's just like, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Maybe it is a stallion, but it's, I don't know. Uh, I just looked up stampede and images. So maybe you said the Texans, look? Oh, the bills, the bills is kind of like the running one. Yeah. Is there a horse NFL logo? The Broncos. Broncos. God damn it. That's like the most br like horse and Fucking the Colts, Broncos. dude. Hey, he did ask for logo. He asked for name and city. So we can figure right, out the right. logo later. Let's Who's go. Coach, OKC bro. Stampede. OKC Stampede. Bob Stoops is the coach. All right. That's it. <laughs> I was going to say, and then we're bringing out, we're bringing Bill Cowher out of retirement and he's just that'd, fucking running the ball down your throat. That'd be sick. Just so they only run. Oh my god, that'd be awesome. <laughs> Best team ever. No, that's not bad. You're the stampede on Madden. No pass plays. That's not bad. I like that. Not bad. Not bad. All right. Here's from John Tommy DeVito, the new Italian stallion of the NFL. What's up, Benny from the block and Joey Bag of Donuts? The pods have been on point. Great topics and tons of comedy. I wanted to see what do you guys think about Tommy DeVito? 
on the New York Giants, a.k.a. Tommy Cutlets. I'm from New Jersey, an Italian. No shit. And this guy has had everyone in a craze over here for the last few weeks, giving some shine on the horrible G-Men. The guy lives 12 minutes from the stadium and his mom and dad's, and his parents literally took look like they came out of the Sopranos and tailgate outside the stadium, smoking cigars and partying. It's amazing. My dad always said Italians are great high school athletes, and that's about it. They always excel in baseball, football, and wrestling, but they really don't make it past the high school level, and they're probably just a few pros, mostly in baseball, that really shined over time. What do you guys think holds us back being once high school and college athletes yourselves? LOL. Smack my ass. I'll pass some gas and hopefully don't get kicked out of Sunday mass. John, this is my guy. Paisan. Um, I like him. Man, that's good. That's a pretty funny point. Tommy DeVito, I think it's great. I love it. Uh, if the Giants somehow just like back their way into that, I think it's hilarious. I mean, it perfectly fits. Put on my coward hat here. Like, you know, you want you you want a quarterback to kind of like Embrace. embody the city that he plays for, right? Like, you know, Big Ben is like so Pittsburgh, like yeah, big and tough and rumbling and like doesn't you know what I mean? Like blue collar, just like all this shit. Like you couldn't have like Bryce Young be the quarterback for the Steelers, right? Peyton Manning, um, Colts. Like, right. Like kind of looks like a horse. Like yeah. so uh, Midwest. Midwest build. Josh. Yeah. Midwest build. Um, Josh Allen with the Bills. Like he's very uh, you know, like he embraces that. You can see him jumping off of a car to like break a table. Like yep. if Tommy DeVito works out for the Giants, that's fucking awesome. Um, that's a pretty good point that his dad brought up about how they're yeah, the Italian amazing, athletes. Dude. That's amazing. That's a great observation. It really is. Because you're like, why isn't uh, that guy? Why didn't that guy make it? You know? And it's always an Italian guy that you like looked up to, but he just didn't do shit. And now he's a plumber. And you're like, what? Yeah. You know, great soccer players, race car drivers. Yeah. You don't hear, uh, you know, the, the pro football Italian doesn't come around too often, bro. That's funny. <laughs> I never thought of that. But I do like Tommy DeVito. That celebration he has or whatever, he like does this. Bro, come Amazing. on. Amazing. I got so jealous when he did that. Wait, so he wants to know, what do you think holds us back? Um, I mean, you played at a level higher than me, so you were closest, I guess. I don't know. Probably like girls, honestly. Like if I had to say it. Like 100%. Probably girls. Probably women. And like, uh, I don't know, wine. <laughs> yeah, the fact that you can't leave your grandmother's all days and shit, like eating just normal, fucking ma- normal, normal life. Eight pounds of pasta and right bread. Seriously, like, yeah, it's like, it's like, yeah. I mean, I, you know, I like to think that Italians, you know, think that, yeah, we we enjoy the libations we enjoy the uh the things that are meant to be enjoyed in life you know, maybe yeah. take it a little too far sometimes italian people love living life <laughs> a little too much dude that's like you know well, they all look like a leather couch when they're fucking 40 years old i'm like god damn fuck. <laughs> you look like a baseball man homie he's like i'm 35 I'm like okay all right yeah yeah, he played Chris. high school baseball, but uh, now he just looks like a damn glove himself. So, <laughs> yeah, dude. Homie looks like a many, Rawlings mitt. A few too many cutlets and cannolis. Uh, yeah, that's love funny. living life. Uh, a couple more from Dylan. Merry Christmas, you filthy animals. What up, boys? Uh, somewhat new listener to the pod. My brother and I saw Joey in St. Louis, and he absolutely killed it. Thank you. But I uh, didn't know about the pod until after that show. Been hooked ever since. Um my question is for Joey. My wife and I are expecting our first child next year. And I know you and your wife just experienced your first Christmas as parents. And I'm curious how different does Christmas feel as a parent compared to how it was before. I feel like Christmas before having kids, but as an adult is being able to sleep in drink some coffee, watch some movies and just chill the whole day. Is Christmas more fun as a parent seeing your kids have fun or is it just full of anxious energy of your kids being wild animals? Um, also my favorite sexy and grungy 2000 MLB players with no expectations. Sexy is Ryan Howard. Grungy is Hunter Pence. Ooh. Mm. Thanks for the laughs every week. My Christmas wish this year is for Santa to shimmy down the chimney, place the presents under the Christmas tree, tiptoe throughout my house without a peep and slap my house with slap my ass before I wake. 
<laughs> that's a new that's a new night before that's a new, that's a these guys night before christmas poem <laughs> yeah dude tiptoe around the house slap my ass um yeah congrats dylan um thanks for coming to the show it was you know frank my son was only three months old last christmas so like it, it, he was you know he's there but he wasn't really like yeah there right you know like you so it didn't really change. It did change because it was fun to have me and my wife like, oh, like, you know, we have the video and we're like showing him all his presents and like looking at him and he's not really doing anything, but it's still yeah. just like so fun to have him there. Um, we did go like, it's super fun, dude. Fucking, you should have come with us. Would have been maybe kind of weird. Would have been fun. But like going Christmas shopping for your kid is so oh, fun. Wait. You got to like, you got to like kind of hide some shit a little bit, right? Not yet. Not yet. But like, we, you know, my, my parents watched them for a night and me and Ryan went and just like went balled out on all sorts of shit at Target and stuff. Oh, and just yeah. like, you're just in the toy aisles and all the fun you stuff. That? You're like, oh, my oh God. he like that. You love this. It's going to be awesome. Oh my God. Can you imagine he's pushing this thing? It's going to be great. So Even that's if it's super like fun. kind of a risky present, you're like, let's see if he likes it. Fuck it. Right. Maybe this is a thing he stumbles onto. I don't, yeah. I don't know. Fuck it. He's one and a half. Okay. Um, so I am very excited for this year, like, because he's so like mobile and walking and wants to do everything and like actually has reactions to things. Like we took him to see Santa today and it was hilarious. Like my man was literally like pointing at him, like on the ground. It was like looking at me and looking back at Santa. I was like, yeah, it's Santa. And he's like, looking at Santa. He's like, Oh, Oh, Oh. He does no that for way. Santa. Yeah, dude. It's so funny. We're like, no. Frank, what's Santa say? And he goes, Oh, oh, oh my God. Amazing. Christmas Amazing. boy. Yeah, no, it's awesome, dude. So congrats. I advise. That's one thing I'll say. The kid comes and, you know, the older they get and everything, like if you got a babysitter around, hire a babysitter or leave them with the parents or whatever. And you guys go out, have a little night and then just fucking, you're like a kid again at Target. You're like, oh my God. Oh, oh, you Bro, know. that's a good that's night right there. Maybe a little coffee. Right. Maybe a little coffee right. in your hand from yeah. the Starbucks. I Ooh, got the That's cart. Fun ass pushing the yeah. cart. You're wearing something like this. You got a little festive on, you know, a little like crew neck yeah. sweater type. You're having so much fun. You got to pee and you jog to the bathroom. That's the night. Yeah. Fun. If I ever see, if I'm ever with BP and we're ever again fucking hanging, like, right, like I know in the past, but like, if he, I've seen him get the high knees before a couple of times. Yeah. It's a little oh, high knee kind of job. Yeah. It's, I'm, I'm like, <laughs> the high knee. Once the high, once the knees get popping. Uh oh. <laughs> All right, last one from Jimmy. Uh, subject: Algae Crumpler. What's up, fellas? I've been loving the recurring theme of 2000s football player names uh, being the subject line of the fan fan mail. And anyway, Crumpler. that bit you guys. <laughs> The video you guys had on the pod a few uh, times ago about the cashier of a fast food place is the QB of the staff. Presentable, likable, got me thinking. What are the other fast food employee positions? Me personally, I feel like the line cooks are the offensive defense, defensive linemen. They control the pace and efficiency of how well yeah. they can handle a rush while regular crew members resemble skill positions, wide receivers, corners, where it's their effort and skill heavily influence the success of everyone else. Just a random thought I had to share. Slide my ass harder than DeAndre Swift running into Jalen's Hurts ass on a fourth and one on their Ooh. own 23. Tush push. Yeah, yeah, I think you kind of nailed it there, Jimmy. Like, mm -hmm. battles won in the bit. trenches. You set the tone in the trenches, bro. Get the big guys on the fryers. Let's go to work. You got to establish the run game. They're set the tone. They're doing the dirty work, you know? Yeah. Have your receivers and slot receivers fill up the drinks and shit, dude. Wrap not up the everybody, burgers. Not everybody wants to be in the dog pile. Not everybody wants to be in the tush push. Too messy. It's, like it's too messy. I don't like it. It's too grunge. All right, then stay out. Yeah. No, you know, just like you don't want to peek your head behind there and see what's going on in the kitchen, you know? That's not for everybody. That's for the hogs. Yep. They're doing the fucking dirty work. That's That's right. And get then your the quarterback is on the cash register. Get your QB on the mic and let's let's run this Wendy's. The QB and it doesn't it could be like a, a decently, you know, like a it could be like an Applebee's or something. Like the the quarterback is the 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 lead manager on shift duty that night. That's like coming around checking on the tables. Yeah. That's gotta be the quarterback. How Everything you guys all right doing? with your meal? Has it tasted everybody right doing good? You need anything? Right. Good, good, good. You know when that guy comes to your table, you're like, oh shit. 
we're being watched. We got the yeah, we got the full full court press on our ass right now. Yep. All and right. You get, you get the you get the diva receiver to be the host. You know, they're at the host stand. Sometimes you're like, are they shitty? What's going on? What the like, oh yeah, you're like, is he not? What's yeah? You you gotta gauge the temperature of the host. Sometimes you're like, like damn, my bad. But sometimes yeah. you're like, oh, come right this way. And you're like, wow, all right. We're getting special treatment. Just like it's a special talent at the wide receiver. Sometimes they're yeah. a diva, but then other times it's like, got to have the guy on your team. Yeah, you got. You don't want to face that guy. All right. Went a little long, but that's all right. Uh, thanks for the emails. Team these guys at gmail.com. Um, appreciate Thick you guys. guys at gmail. Always. Com. Um, <laughs> just, you know, we have these questions, but like whatever you pick up on, you know, like if there's something that really is like, Oh, that would be fun that I want to comment into these guys. We'll talk about it, whether it's a rating, whether it's a comment on YouTube, whether it's an email that's sent in, uh, you know, we just love the clubhouse, man. So we appreciate it. Clubhouse, man. When I picture the clubhouse, I just picture like a tree house in, the, in somebody's backyard. And there's just like, like five dudes in there. And there's like a poster on the wall of like Joey Porter doing that kick. You know what I mean? That's the club yeah. right there. We're just Eddie George. Smart. Terrell Davis. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we can, it'd be midnight. Another hour. Eight, eight hour long of just the posters at the yeah. clubhouse. Byron Leftwich. Jags. Thank you, just face mask. Heel. Here, I gotta know why. I just had to put him up there out of respect. Byron, that is like the Jags embodiment of a quarterback, too. Like, I can't get over him. The biggest face mask of all time. Joey Harrington Lions up there. With the black jersey on, you're like, yeah, dude. <laughs> hey, come to the show on the 21st, December. Yeah. Even if you're Holiday not from Indy, dude, make the make the trek. It's gonna be it's gonna be lit. It's gonna be lit. Holiday hoes. Yeah, dude. Absolutely. Get some TG merch. Shit. It's going to be there. All, All right. Day, ho, ho, ho. Uh, cool. We'll uh, talk to you next week.